Good afternoon and welcome to the National Newspaper Publicists Association and the Black Press of America's Fire broadcast. Veteran actor and comedian Mark Christopher Lawrence will join us th this afternoon and he shines as the lead in his co-produced project, Stacks, which earned him a 2021 Daytime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Daytime Fiction Program. He also uh, has starred in and received a nomination for The Flourish. And now he's working with Tyler Perry on the series, All the Queen's Men. Let us bring on Mark Christopher Lawrence. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? I am doing well, good to see you. Likewise. Hey, so um, first and foremost, congratulations on those Emmy nominations. It's not every day that you uh, get that phone call, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it was pretty exciting. I. Um... You know, did the work and 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 you know had a great time doing it and and then when the nominations came through it was really exciting uh, after being in industry for so long uh, it, I think I was more excited because it was it was these little small projects as opposed to something huge you know yeah and so and it it says you never know right because when these you're working on these so-called blockbusters and 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 it's crickets right when it comes to awards time and like I said the small ones. Uh, what what a surprise! And and, and I guess um, talk about that though. When when you have these smaller projects that maybe some folks won't put much credence in, but what do you put into them? Well, you know, it's like uh, usually I'll do a small film for a student or for a local filmmaker um, because these are the filmmakers of tomorrow. I mean, this this is what gives you longevity in your career. And, and so for me, when I'm when I'm working on those those smaller projects, it, it's I, I want to put my best foot forward and and make sure that uh you know as as a whole the project shines and um you know both of these the script was funny and uh, well <laughs> the flourish is not funny but the, the script was <laughs> was was uh written well and I, I really wanted to be involved and then you know with with uh stacks you know it was it was 48 hours before we uh la shut down for the quarantine oh wow you know my, my producing partner and director of this thing gerald webb contacted me and said hey i have this idea for this film and he ran it by me i said i said oh that sounds good so then he went and wrote a draft and sent it to me and we talked about it and then he did a rewrite and then the next day he says hey uh let's shoot it tonight <laughs> and so i drove up drove up to la from san diego and we started shooting at seven and was done by three and la was on lockdown the next day Wow. Talk about fortuitous, man, and timing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and talk about that, Mark, um, about the, the, the lockdown. I, I know it was tough on everybody. We've had um, we've had a lot of celebrities on the program um, during the uh, pandemic, and, and they've talked about uh, the lack of work. But and more than that, just, you know, how it affected their lives. Talk about uh, your your career and the pandemic. W what happened? Well, I was really busy, uh, especially in comedy. I was traveling a lot. Uh, I had gone to Canada a couple of times for tours, and I was just back from Canada uh, at the end of February and had a couple of auditions and was thinking, okay, next few months I'm going to be really busy. I'm going to be on the road a little bit. You know, it's pilot season, so i got to pick and choose, uh, you know, if I have to cancel, what, what, what do I need to cancel on the road? And then right the next week, I started getting text messages and emails and and phone calls of of events canceling. You know, hey, we're gonna have to reschedule. And so that first two weeks, it was awesome because I was so exhausted from being on the road that uh, you know I, I slept like nineteen <laughs> hours a day. The cat was looking at me like, "Are you a cat?" <laughs> and so, and then after that first couple of weeks, I was like, "Okay, we still we still doing this? Is this it's still happening?" And and so. I lost every gig from mid March through July, yeah. and and then I was like, "Oh wow, this is amazing!" Uh, you know, what are we gonna do? But you know, God, being who He is, <laughs> you know, sh showed me that He is God, and and uh, I didn't need anything, you know. <laughs> um, and then July rolled around, and a, a second wave of cancellations started, you know. Luckily, one of the films that canceled uh, came back in June, so I did that one. And then uh, when everything else started canceling throughout the rest of the year, uh, finally I get a call 
for an audition. I took just a break. I was like, okay, I need to just clear my head. So I went up to Sacramento and hung out for a couple of days and then went over to Carson City. And then uh, while I was in Sacramento, I got a call for an audition for Tyler Perry's All the Queen's Men. And uh, I did put myself on tape and sent it in. And they, two days before Thanksgiving, I get a call, you got the job. I was like, oh, cool. Wow. And uh, Tyler had a serious bubble going on. You know, like the, the day after they hired me, somebody knocked on the door, you know, wanted to do a COVID test. Wow. Uh, yeah. And then three days before you fly, you get another one. And then he flies out privately and takes you directly to the studio. You get another one before you even get onto campus. You're like in the parking structure. <laughs> they put you in the house that you're going to be in for the shoot. And you wait four hours for everybody's test to come back. And then they open up camp, uh, get your temperature taken every morning. Every four days, you get another COVID test until you leave. And it was really, you know, uh, quite an eye opener of, of the seriousness of you know this pandemic. Yeah. You know, and, Tyler and look, really did it well. And I was going to ask you, looking back on how he did it, um, and then you look up, look around you, even now with the uh, Delta variant going berserk, right? Uh, and folks don't want to uh, wear masks. They don't, they, they don't want to get a vaccine. And they, many of them don't want to get tested. But you right. guys did it right. Right. I, you know, it, it's, it's funny. Tyler, I think, shut down for a couple of months checked out the NBA to see what their bubble was and he kicked it up a notch, you know? Um, and really, I, I mean, I applaud him. It's like, it's like he did, he did, you know, great research and, and great implementation, yeah. you know, which, which kept people safe. And, and, and that's the thing. And, and I, I was just speaking with a nurse friend of mine this morning who said that, you know, it's heartbreaking for her because she's, she's in the COVID ward right now. And she said, you know, people are in there sick and saying, you know, now they want the, vac the vaccine. And it's like, well, you know, you're a little late now. <laughs> right, right. Wow. And, you know, today um, there was an announcement. Uh, Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones, they they are uh, going back on tour. Um, you're seeing things uh, happening. You're a comic. You you, you do stand up. Um, mm -hmm. Are you back on the road at all? I, I've, I've, I've had some gigs, uh, you know, in and out. Uh, did one at a, at a church and probably about 800 people. Uh, but I was very careful with with photos and shaking hands and, you know, kept my sanitizer with me as soon as I'm, <laughs> I'm done, just sanitize before I touch my face and, you yeah. know, and, and just trying to be careful. Yeah. And, and explain to us, you know, um, I'm sure there's this different approach to each. At least I think there's a different approach to each as a stand up comic. When you go on the stage, you're out, out there by yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you are in, a, in a, a TV show or a movie, there's a script. What's the difference for you um, as a comedian? Um, what's the different challenges uh, on the stage as a stand-up and, uh, you know, on, the, on camera, whether it's a TV show or a movie? Well, one thing about being on stage by yourself is, is you are in complete control of what you do and what you say and... Um, uh, the thing I like about live is that you know if you suck right now, <laughs> you can you can come back and fix it tomorrow. You know, same thing with theater. You know, um, but when you're doing television and film, you know you don't have much control over that. Um, yeah, if, you can do different takes, and, but you don't know what take they're going to use. For example, when, when I was working with Will Smith on Pursuit of Happiness, you know the scene where he comes to get the money from me. Uh, my best take was the second take, and you know his best take was about the sixth take. And when we, when I watch it, they clearly use his best take. Right. So I don't have any control over that. You know, you got to hope the editor does you a good turn. Yeah. And what was that like? That movie actually um, was a huge. Uh, it was. It was huge. It was a great movie. That, you know, it was obviously it was it was uh, based on on the uh, true story. But yeah. what was that like working on that set? Because also. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Will's son was the kid in in that show. Yeah, yeah Jaden was was in it. it. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, my my respect level for Will just jumped up by leaps and bounds because he every take was trying to get better, and that's the way I work. As, as I'm working, I'm trying to make it better every take. I give you a little something more, a little something different, and he was doing the same thing. And it's like I was like, wow, you know, he is really a professional and really uh, has some great acting chops um 
the set was great. I mean, I mean, Will, Will was, you know, just as a human being, you, you know, when, when I came to set the very first time I, I get into makeup and he's in the makeup trailer and normally, you know, stars are in their own trailer and the makeup artist comes to them. Right. And right. He's in there. So it's just me and him. He gets up out of his chair, comes over, gives me a hug, and welcomes me to set. Who does that? It's like, it's like not, not out of the 35 years I've been in the business, not one star has done that. Yeah. And so just, you know, just huge respect for him and his craft and his, and his humanitarian and generosity. Yeah. And I've heard, um, actors, comedians, I've heard uh, entertainers say that this business is not for everybody. When did you know it was for you? Because every time I tried to do something else, the door was immediately slammed and God would send something, send me another gig. I, I remember I, I went to USC on a debate scholarship. I was going to, I was in my head, I was going to be a lawyer. And I took a, a voice class for speaking and centering and had to do two monologues and two songs to pass the class and then got talked into auditioning for the acting program at USC and got in and uh, started working professionally the same year. And then five years after I graduated, all my friends from the debate team were, were you know, working for judges or, or, or in major law firms. And, you know, here I am in this career that's uh, lots of ups and downs. And I had a period of about three months where I didn't have a job. And I was like, hmm, I got to do something. So I'm, I'm looking for something else to do and saw this ad in the paper, learn to deal cards. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can audit the first class. It's $499. I go in to audit the class and about 10 o'clock that morning, class started at seven, about 10 o'clock suits come in, shut the class down. They're laundering money through the class. And, <laughs> And then about a week and a half later, I get a call from the wardrobe designer from Terminator 2 saying, hey, I need your sizes. And I had an audition. I auditioned for Terminator 2 three months ago. Right. And so, so I called my agent. I said, hey, I just got a call from wardrobe from Terminator 2. She goes, yeah, we're on the phone with them right now. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that was God going, you know, this is, this is where I'm putting you. I'm putting you over here to do this. And every time that I've said, okay, I'm going to find something else to do. Mm -mm, hasn't happened. Guy's like, nope, that's not where I want you. Here's here's a job. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and you, now you told me um, off air that you um, kind of started comedy in the eleventh grade. Talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, I had a tenth grade teacher, an English teacher, Mrs. Schilling, who uh, got me involved in in speech. She got me involved in theater. I did did one play in high school with her and won the Compton Literary Olympiad uh, as best actor. Um, one of the speeches that I did was oral interpretation of literature. And she had a, a gentleman named Perry Prince come to the school and, and work with me on it because he had done that same speech when he was in high school. And so uh, he was doing a thing at USC called Evening of Soul. And he kind of talked to me about doing three minutes of comedy at Evening of Soul and kind of helped coach me in, getting myself together for it. And I did it and it was funny. And then my best friend said, let's go to the comedy store and get you on stage over there. And that's when, that's how it started. Wow. Comedy store. That's, you know, what? that's a big step up. That's a rough crowd right there. It's almost like the Apollo in New York. Well, I'll tell you that that first night that was on stage, we got bumped uh, because Robin, Robin Williams came in and did 45 minutes. I was supposed to go in at 10 o'clock. I didn't get on until midnight. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and did my three minutes and was funny and still had to go to school the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, com comedy store is renowned for, for for that. Yeah, Robin Williams, that was his stomping ground. So many stomping grounds, D.L. Hughley, um, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, Michael Richards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Mark, um, also, yeah, you know, you're, you're from Compton. You were telling me you're from Compton, but you told me something interesting. I didn't realize this, um, but you said that your family was one of the first or the second uh, black family on the block when you first moved to Compton. Yeah, yeah, that was 1969. We, we were the, we were the second black family on our street, and um, I, it wasn't until recently I was watching this movie on Netflix called Them, and started bringing back memories because you know as a kid i didn't i didn't really realize what racism was and mm -hmm. you know our driveway touched our neighbor's driveway so really the only kid i played with on our street was this kid next door and as i'm watching them i realized that every time i came outside 
you know, the other kids, their parents would call them in, into the house. So I didn't have any other friends on that street except for this kid next door. Wow. And I didn't realize that until, until you know, I was watching them and I was like, oh, <laughs> it just started bringing back this flood of memories, you know? <laughs> wow. And, and Mark, um, while, while you're probably best known for your uh, comedic uh, performances as an actor, do you prefer doing comedy or drama? I think I'm a better dramatic actor than I am a comedic actor. Okay. And, and here's, here's why. Um, I work harder at the dramatic stuff because, because uh, in, in order to get to where you need to be uh, emotionally, to get to a scene to cry, to get to a scene to be angry, you got to dig around in some ugly stuff in your own life to help you get there. You know, mm -hmm. to, there's techniques that, that help you do that. And um, as a comic, you know, I'm naturally funny. Things, my, my timing is there already. It's like I was kind of born with some natural timing and, and, and stuff. And so that comes easy. So I don't work as hard at it. At it. Um, you know, really, the only thing I, I really work hard at with comedy is the writing part of it. Okay. Um, the, with drama, you know, it's like it's, it's so in depth and I just, I want to be so real that I, I really work hard at, 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 at that side of it. And I think because of, of that, I'm, I'm a better dramatic actor than I'm a comedic actor. And on both ends, comedy and, and, um, and drama, with comedy, is there, is there someone that, you, um, that inspired you uh, comedically? And is there someone who inspired you on the other side? Uh, comedically, I, I think I think I like the storytellers. I've always, you know, that's my style of comedy is storytelling, and uh, I like doing that, telling stories and and pulling stories right out of my life and bringing them back to life for the audience. Um, so, so I was really inspired by by Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, people like that. And Bill actually gave me the, my the first note that really sort of uh, shaped the way I perform now. I was working on Ghost Dad with Bill and Sydney Portier was directing. And I was watching a seven minute tape of myself in my trailer. And I had the door open and Bill and Sydney walked by and Bill saw the tape and he says, hey, how long is it? I said, seven minutes. So he stood up on my stairs and watched the whole seven minutes. And he said, um, it's as if you're afraid of the silence. He says, you're telling so many jokes, you're not giving the audience a chance to laugh. He says, he says after you land the joke, and he says, wait until the laughter subsides and don't move, don't talk until that laughter starts coming down, then go. And I went from seven and a half minutes or seven, seven minutes to 25 overnight. Wow. Just from taking that one note. I was doing that many jokes in seven minutes. Just wow. You know? wow. And, and it, was, it was the best note I could ever get. And now it's like when I watch myself, I see myself waiting for that laughter and then go. <laughs> yeah. So just, just from that little piece of advice, it changed everything. Yeah. yeah. Change wow. the way I worked, you know, as, as, as a comic and telling stories. And then I started watching, you know, tapes of, of storytellers and, and, you know, just, just, you know, watching the way they, they were on stage, the act outs and that kind of thing. And, and uh, like, if you talk to comics that I work with a lot here in San Diego, they'll tell you that, that sometimes it's like, I'm not even thinking about, you know, what is going on. But if I have a character in my act that I'm talking about, I don't really talk about them. I let the character talk for themselves. And, and so I'm doing these act outs and not, not really even thinking about it. Wow, that, that's incredible. Um, also, Mark, are you involved in projects behind the camera? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm producing a couple of things. You know, we have, have a couple of things that are on, in the fire right now that we're trying to get done. Um, I'm uh, pitching a show with Rusty Cundiff, who wrote, wrote and directed some of the Chappelle show and Fear of a Black Hat, Tales from the Hood. So he and I are, are, are good friends, and, and we have a show that, that we're trying to get out. Um, you know, fingers crossed and prayers and, <laughs> and all that. Um, so hopefully over the next few weeks that, that thing will start popping. We, we have a big meeting on Monday. We'll see what happens. And, and let's go back um, to all the Queens men. Tell us about that. Um, I, that's a BET show, right? Yeah, I think I think it's going to be BET Plus. It's 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 a departure from what Tyler Perry normally does. I don't think I've ever seen uh, this setting on television before. Uh, it's about a, a young lady who who is uh, played by Eva Marcel, who uh, is a club owner, and and my character is a club owner, and you know we kind of clash a little bit. I guess I'm I'm sort of her nemesis in this thing. Um, 
they shot 10 episodes for the pilot season. I'm in four of them and it's, it's, it's going to be exciting. And I'm, 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 playing a very sort of dramatic character however they gave me some freedom to be funny and and that was good so, so there's some a couple of funny moments and and but you know very serious yeah is there a role um mark that's that that's out there or or hasn't you know yet been developed yet that you can see yourself in that you haven't done yet I think my, my very first big agents saw me doing a play called Life is a Dream. It's a Calderon piece. It's it's a classical piece. And I was playing King Basilio in this thing and, and it's very dramatic. And uh, I was they signed me, you know, when they saw me in this play. And then a year later they saw me do stand up and never sent me out for another dramatic thing after that. But my my early career is all sitcoms. And um, I, I want to play something dark, okay, you know, so, so that people can see that range. You know, I want to, I want people to be able to see that that you know, Mark is not just funny; he can go really dark if he has to. Yeah. And uh, I, I was actually trying to to find a character to play, like a, a maybe a biopic, and and there was a a, a guy they they called him the L.A. Creeper, and yeah. um, I started doing some research about that and then somebody beat us to the punch and did the story. So wow. it's like, so now I'm just trying to find another character that's, that's dark that maybe we can develop and you know, maybe we'll have to create it. I don't know. It's interesting because we, I, I know I've heard co comics uh, say that they want to play those type of roles. We, in fact, Sinbad, we had Sinbad on a couple of mm -hmm. times last year and, and he even mentioned wanting to play, play uh, roles in which he's like the bad guy, the murderer or whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because, is it because you're, comics? I think it's because you're funny all the time. You know what I mean. And and because you're funny all the time, you 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 want to uh, have have an opportunity to 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 show that you can stretch and and that you're not just one dimensional. Yeah, absolutely. And and so I want to go back to those Emmys. Let's talk about those Emmy nominations. Uh, where were you when you received the call or notification? However, you received it. Um, that you were nominated for, uh, in, in this case, uh, two Emmys. I, I don't even remember. I think the first one was was a, a it, it's a, a regional Emmy for the Flourish, and I got a, a text message from from the director producer saying, "Hey, uh, you've been nominated." And so then I went and found it and went, "Oh, cool, very cool." And I, I think I might have just been at home, and then um, and then I was I was getting ready to go on stage at the Madhouse in San Diego when when the other one popped into my a text message popped into my phone and uh about you know the daytime emmy and i looked at it and went oh cool so, <laughs> so i told the guy who was introduced me tell him uh two-time emmy emmy nominated <laughs> you know use that <laughs> use that in the in the intro which there is you go pretty cool <laughs> a oh, absolutely so so we have the uh the tyler perry series but you, you have so much going on. You always got something going on. Uh, what what can we expect in the immediate future for Mark Christopher Lawrence? Well, I think right now I'm you know I'm concentrating on on you know just getting some getting some comedy, getting on stage and doing some comedy. You know, writing some new stuff. I want to work on a new hour, and um, I'm working on my one man show, uh, and so I, I need to write some jokes for that because the one man show is incorporating, you know, my acting skills and my comedy skills, putting them both in the, on the same plate. And so we need to, to develop some material that works with the show. Right. So in, in writing my new hour, um, I just need to hit the stage a lot. So I'm going to be you know, on stage a lot, you know, coming up. Wow. Just working and out stuff. Is there a national tour uh, planned? No, not a, not a, not as of yet. I, I think w what has to happen is is you know we we need to see what's going to go on with the show that we're pitching and and see what happens with that. And um, I'll wait until you know all the Queen's Men come out and see what kind of what kind of feedback we get from that, and then maybe that'll, that'll spur a tour. Um, and I do a lot of comedy at churches, so so uh, my comedy is is clean. You know, that's my my dry bar comedy special is called Mark Christopher Lawrence Clean Out of Compton. So, um, you know, I, I would love to just do like a tour of churches. That would be great. Just because <laughs> people just come to laugh. You know, they don't have to have alcohol and they don't have to have, you know, dirty jokes to make them laugh. And, and, and yeah. it's, 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 it's good. 
you know, yeah. a national church tour would be fantastic. <laughs> well, um, look, if you could do it clean, that means that, uh, I think it means that it shows more intelligence, <laughs> not to knock, not to knock the uh, the Richard Pryors and Eddie Murphys of the world. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> the late right. Richard Pryor. <laughs> you know, Robin Harris uh, told me, you know, Mark always write clean. He says you can work anywhere, and and he was right. And it's like you know, I would watch his act at the Comedy Act Theater, and it wasn't clean. But then we'd be in a park <laughs> at two o'clock on Saturday, same act, squeaky clean. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what 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 a uh, talent! Um, you you mentioned Robin Williams a couple of times. What what a Robin talent. Harris, Robin, Robin Harris. Harris. Robin, yeah. What what is and died so young. Yeah, yeah. Just about to blow up too. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you know what did you take from someone like Robin Harris? Other than what you just mentioned about right and clean, what did you take from a Robin Harris? Um, just the, the fun and the, the zeal in which he took the stage. He, he'd get on stage, he'd have so much fun. You know, he was having more fun than the, than the audience. And, and so <laughs> for me, you know, my goal every time I hit the stage is to have fun. It's like, if it, because if it's not fun, why do it? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, obviously, I, I didn't know Robin Harris personally, but I, I do remember uh, his work. And I do remember, like you said, he seemed to have fun on that stage. He he would find the biggest guy. For instance, I remember Tiny Lister. Tiny. Was in, yeah. <laughs> and he would, he would start with Tiny <laughs> from the from the stage. I'm thinking this guy is out of his mind, but he was absolutely yeah. hilarious. Yeah, he was so funny. People filled up the Comedy Act Theater to see him. You know, the, the other acts were, were, you know, a nice consolation prize, but they came to see Robin. Yeah, yeah. He he famously said he wears his wedding ring on the wrong finger because he married the wrong woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Mark, um, we, we only have a few moments left, but has the process gotten any easier over the years for you? I, I think, you know, it, it, it's it's gotten easier in that, you know, I'm only, you know, I generally just go straight to producer. If I'm if I'm auditioning, you know, and and I'm either going to get a job or not with one audition, and um, and I get some just flat out offers, which is great, you know, more offers would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Make it clear. <laughs> yeah, because I think I think for me the, the the auditioning process, I hate the auditioning process because it doesn't really show what you can do. I mean, it gives them a glimpse at it, and sometimes you get the stuff the night before, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing the preparation that I would do if I'm working on a project. When I'm working on a project, I spend hours and hours on it. You know, for an audition, I'm just trying to get it in there, get it into my head and and uh, give you the best I can do with the time allotted. Wow. And and briefly, uh, Mark, is there someone you haven't worked with that you'd love to work with? Mm. I don't know. I've worked with some great people, you know. I've, yeah, I've, you I've, have. <laughs> I've worked with, you know, everybody from like Burt Reynolds to Will Smith. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've really, you know, had a, had a blessed career in that I, I was able to work with, you know, like like the only person I've ever really fanboyed over was was John Lithgow because before I was an actor, I saw him in terms of endearment and thought, wow, he is really good. And then yeah. when I worked with him, I was like, that's John Lithgow. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and who 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 can go either way, right? Uh, he can go serious, and he can go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, you, I remember he had he had an arc in, in Dexter, where he comes on. He's like the sweetest guy you want to meet, and brings this lady her dog back. And the next time you see her, she's bleeding out in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, John Lithgow. See, and, and it's that kind of role that i'm looking for you know you know yeah he's a sweet guy but deadly <laughs> well listen uh, you know uh producers whomever directors mark christopher lawrence is your guy for the next stab him up shoot him up whatever <laughs> <laughs> dexter's coming back <laughs> right. Man, we, we really appreciate you stopping by the Black Press of America and the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Uh, Mark, we'll, be, we'll continue to follow your great, great, inspiring career and uh, come back and see us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really had a great time, Stacey. I appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you. Mark Christopher Lawrence, everyone. Uh, everybody, wear a mask. Get vaccinated if it doesn't bother your conscience. Uh, 
and stay well, stay healthy. We will see you tomorrow morning on Let It Be Known at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Everybody have a great day.